All right, guys, welcome back. It's your boy, D. Ratner, here with another Python coding video. I'm going to be showing how to code Oregon Trail on Python right now. Uh, so first thing I like to do, just comment everything out, just so I know, you know, what I need, what I don't need. So I'm just going to, I'm going to comment it by section. So these are like the welcome stuff. Uh, that's all that. These are global variables. These are constants. And then here is where we start our actual functions. And then these are the handlers. So this is what lets us input events. And then these are game states. And then finally, we have our actual gameplay. And this is all in a loop. So I like to do this because it makes it a lot easier. We have everything labeled nicely so we can find it easier. Um, and that's that. So let's just get started with making some functions some custom functions. All right, so first one we're going to do is the date as string. And what it does is it takes two arguments, M and D, and it spits out a string. So it spits out June 3rd or December 24th, whatever it might be. So if we start the function, we want to say what it does. So it returns or prints a date. And then we take two arguments. So the M is going to be the month. And what this use, what this right here is, is the name of the month. And we start off with fake and then January, February. And the reason we do this is because the zero index will be fake. The one index will be January, February, March. That way all the months are have their corresponding uh, number with them. January is at one, February is at two. So for the month name, we want to print out the month name. So we want to print out today is plus name of month and then we could access the index depending on what we do and that will be m plus we want to put a space plus the day which would be d and we convert that into a string because we can't add an integer and a string All right, so that's the first one. Uh, this one, we do miles remaining. So all it does is it prints out the miles remaining. That's another easy one. Prints out miles remaining. And the way we find the miles remaining is we have a global variable at the top, which is the miles traveled. And we want to travel 2,000 miles. So we could just do print. You have traveled. plus miles remaining, or sorry, miles plus 2,000 minus miles traveled. And since we use miles traveled, we have to actually bring it in because it's a global variable. Global miles traveled. All right, so you have traveled 2,000 minus miles traveled. Um, we want to convert that into a string since it will give us an integer. And then we can add in miles. Close that off. And the reason we're doing these is so when we check the status of our game, it prints out both. So we could do data string and miles remaining. And when we do handle status, it's going to write these. So we could do, we can call in the data string function. And we can call in the miles remaining function. And that way we have them already. We don't have to worry about doing that later. All right, this next one, days and months, it takes in the month number and then it returns how many days are in that month. And luckily, this one is mostly done for us, so this will return integer of 
days and month. Luckily, we have something here. We have these months with 31 days. So what we can do is do a simple if m in months with 31 days. It'll return 31. And we could just use this format for all of them. We'll make these else if statements. And we'll make this 30 and 28. All right. And then if we want to, we can add an else just to check. Uh, but I'm not making this really good right now. Wrong number or something. All right. We'll skip this sickness that occurs for now and the consume food. Uh, let's just get into the actual handlers. So for the handlers, we want to do travel, handle rest, handle hunt. And uh, if we just look back, we have these global variables or these constants, which are minimum miles per travel, minimum days per travel, so on and so forth. So what we can do is uh, when their user does travel, we want to choose a random number for both travel and for uh, distance. So we could do distance, distance traveled is equal to something, and then days traveled is going to be equal to something. So these are two local variables, and we can finally use that random, uh, random dot random integer. So we'll choose a random integer, and we could do it between the two values. So it could be between 30 and 60 miles, and between three and seven days. So we'll do between 30 and 60, and then we can use that for our days and the days was between three and seven all right then we can print them out just so we have some validation that something happened so we could say you have traveled this many miles plus uh, distance traveled. We have to make that a string. And then we'll do the same thing with how many days it took. Uh, you traveled for this many days. All right, and then we want to update our global variables. So we'll have to use the global keyword again. And then remember, we have our day global variable right here, and then we have our miles traveled global variable. So we want to update both, and we want to bring in both. So we'll do global day, and then we also need miles traveled. We could do day plus equals to days traveled and then distance travel what was it uh, miles traveled plus equals to distance traveled all right we'll have to add in some more code but let's move on to the next one handle rest we rest if we uh, we want to check first because we can only have up to five health so in the actual rest let's do something like this so if health level is equal to five, we'll print out you are fully rested. And then else we'll do handle rest. So that way we check if we're fully rested. And then so this one, it changes our level by one and then it could take between two and five. So we can use some of this code again. So we'll use global day and health level. Then we can kind of use this days traveled again. We'll do days rested. And that was between, for rest, it was between two and five.
All right, then we'll print out how many days we rest just so we get some validation. <laughs> You rest for this many days. All right, then we got to update day plus equals to uh, days rested. And then finally, um, health level plus equals to one. All right, and then finally we have hunt and it's very similar. For hunt, we get 100 pounds of food, so that'll be constant. And the days could be between two and five again. So I'm gonna have to use global variables again. So global day and then food remaining. Uh, we can use a lot of this code again. So we'll do days. We'll do days hunting for this one between two and five again. You hunt for this many days, days hunting. All right, days plus equal to days hunting. And instead of doing health level, we'll do uh, food remaining plus equal to 100. All right, so that's most of what we need for that. Uh, we have the status, we have all that help we could do as well. Uh, so if we do help, all we have to do is we print out the help text. Help text. So that's already given to us. That's another easy one. Uh, invalid response, all of these are done. Uh, so really all we have to do is finish these food consume and our a rollover month and instead of doing a food consumed function uh, what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna consume food within it so uh, since all of these will be random uh, for each one we could do food remaining so we'll have to bring in food remaining and then uh, we're gonna be consuming five pounds of food each day uh, depending on how many days so then we'll do food remaining minus equals to how many days so it was days traveled for this one minus equals to days traveled times five so however many days we took times five and then we could do this for all of them so that way we don't have to write a function this way is a little bit easier it's probably not the best way but it works uh, so if we're hunting we still use food so uh, this one we did days hunting This one we did days rested. And then we also have to bring in food remaining. All right, so that handles that. Advanced game clock, I'm not going to do. Uh, rollover month is one that we'll need to do, but I'll do it in part two.